the town budget meeting uh, for the sewer plant. Uh, 19th of November, uh, we pulled the UV bulbs and cleaned them and uh, changed out a couple lights and pumped them that were burned out. And on the 28th, uh, we had a bad ballast in the way to the bathroom and we, we changed out uh, the whole fixture and just put another fixture in there. Basically, that's all we had for the whole month. Uh, it was real quiet up there. Um, I did talk to Toby last Friday, I believe it was. And I believe he was down to four or five residents left to do what he was done. He was going to be done. Okay, good, because uh, basically we paid him for seven units, and then today we're in the bill we got for six more. And so he must be done a few since then. Yep, I think he has. And um, he had two that he couldn't find a tank on. Do you remember we talked about that last month? Yeah. Wayne went out and we did locate one set of tanks in it. Um, but the set of tanks that is in the Chestnut Inn area, um, Wayne believes has been paved over. So I don't know what we're going to do about that yet. We're still trying to locate them. But it's, he thinks there's pavement over those tanks. We cannot locate them anywhere. Okay, I think. I think we had that problem before. Yeah, I think no. we did too. Believe me, had to uh, go through the pavement in order to work on the reports. Anyway, so we're gonna go back up and uh, you know relook at that, but see if we can't see if we can't locate him. But that would be the last one, last residence that has to be done. Okay, I think he had to dig a couple, replace all the conduits coming across. He moved a couple of boxes, um, got them a little bit closer to the tanks. So I think you're probably on about your last five, four or five. That was as of Friday. He was he was still shooting to get everything done by the first of the year. But I, I told him that we would like to get that done by the first of the year. That sounds good. Larry Schaefer, about a quarter year old um, in the spring. And um, he mentioned to me that we had done him a couple of favors by picking up stone and stuff along the highway that his truck's been dropping off. We went down with a sweeper. Did a few favors, so I think we're going to get that quarter level cheaper free. <laughs> that looks like a good thing going on there. So one hand washes the other. So, um, all we'll do is truck it up there, and, uh, and uh, I'll have my loader up there, and we can start working that back and get a nice road out in there for, for Dick to get out there and pump those tanks in the spring. Okay. And I talked to the guys um, about in the spring, uh, we're going to take probably a Saturday. And I'm going to send three or four of the guys up in the back of all those uh, trucks, and whatever we need to dig up all those tank, uh, tank lids around, around the lake. I think Wayne thinks we can get it done possibly in two days. I'm hoping we can get it done in one day. So it'll be one or two days work there to get those all uncovered. And then when I get those uncovered, I'll schedule a uh, camper job with uh, Steve Grimm from New York Low Water to do that main gravity fed line, the big line, and we'll uh, we'll get that done this coming year, and we should be caught up. That sounds real good. So, I don't see any expense with the uh, uncovered tanks at all, <coughs> other than the time we're paying the, the time we pay the village, you know, for going up there and uncovering them all. Okay. Um, I don't see a whole lot of <coughs> expense in there. The blacktop's going to be real minimal, you know. That's that's. No, it's not much black top to patch around those <coughs> yeah. risers or that money. So, okay. you know, I think we'll be in good shape. Very good. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Hey, Steve. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Hi, you sit there?
During the summer, Debbie Preston sent out an opportunity for anyone who wanted to have input on the comprehensive plan for Broome County. And it was quite um, interesting to have that opportunity. We probably have never done it before. <clears throat> and I wondered how we're doing, where our town of Sanford fits into the comprehensive plan and what is the time frame for it. And it's been since 2012, maybe, or 2002, since we've had uh, 10 years have gone by. I guess that's normal for the comprehensive plan to need an update. And I just wondered, could you tell me or someone on the board where we where well, that fits in? I think maybe I could. I don't think anything has been done at all recently. It, uh, it's something that we should be getting onto. Uh, in fact, the lawyer even mentioned that in the last month or two. But, uh, <clears throat> basically, are you saying you'd like to have input on that? I would. Okay. If, is it through the plan, our planning committee in Broome County send someone out to help one of their planners? I think Frank, uh, what's his name, D'Angelo, or I think he's one that uh, Herb has contacted, mm -hmm. and uh, possibly it, uh, a couple of board members would like to uh, um, take that task on and, and work with uh, some individuals like you. It, uh, that'd be good. Thank you. It, uh, time it was updated. Okay. I have another question. Okay. Um, with the open meeting law, that was going to change that you mentioned way back in the summer. You said that there was going to be a um, a specific date that would you would have to, as a board, have your information on a website, so the public would know in the meetings, the agenda and, and the minutes, and and um, forms that are needed, just like the similar to what the village has now. So they have a nice website. We, we don't have that cable building. No. So there's no plan for you to. To well, for the public to be able to look forward to that, for uh, more I won't say I won't happens. say right away. The, the young fellow that isn't here tonight is really the only <coughs> one I believe on the board that has computer knowledge. I guess you would say um, he has he has mentioned that. Uh, uh, I believe if you I don't believe you were here the last meeting, but uh, we seem to be putting some tests on him to uh, tackle some of the grants and one thing and another and uh, uh, <clears throat> we don't have, I'm going to say, I guess a lot of experience as far as grants. Uh, he has more of that capability. I believe the young lady standing next to you has a lot of that capability. Yeah, she does. Uh, <clears throat> Could you have a subcommittee to work with Kevin? Or it just seems like we're in the dark ages. We need to feel like we have more openness with the meetings. And what, so we could be prepared to come to the meeting and know what you're going to be discussing and not feel like we're walking in the middle of somebody else's, you know, it's just not. I believe your husband last month uh, stopped down and- uh, He did pick up. And, and got an agenda, which, uh, Anybody's welcome to do, uh, but we do not have the capability of putting it on a website. I have a nice recommendation. Garrett Raymond is uh, really I, good at that. I don't have my hearing aids in. My mind is pretty well gone. <laughs> and, uh, I'm having trouble hearing you. Uh, Garrett Raymond is very talented. Becky and Terry's oldest boy. Mm -hmm. That's what he does for a living is information technology. And I'm sure he wouldn't be very expensive. And he's right here in town. Maybe they'd like him out of town, but right now he's in town. You know, he started working for NBT doing information technology. Um, I heard he did. Yeah. I hear he likes the job very much. Yes, he does. He's good. He's very good. Any other questions? What is the activity on Shaver Hill? Maybe JD can answer this. With all the, the trees, they, they've been working for a couple of weeks. Shaver Hill? I think so. 
That's where it sounds. It's behind Mary's house. There's maybe there's logging up there. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, there is logging off Shaver Hill. Yes, there is. There's a logger out of Pennsylvania that is logging back there on Shaver. Oh, okay. okay. That's probably why you hear a lot of chainsaws and loggers. Well, it seems like it's more than that, but no. Just wanted to make. They're sure. just logging, to my knowledge. They okay. come to a vault to get an access permit for the driveway, but there's just a logger in there at this time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I had. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have the minutes. Uh, regular meeting at round 13 and the special meeting of round 14.
actual expense. Uh, I believe that was uh, <coughs> to cover some uh, uh, standard costs. Correct. How big all that uh, has been? Okay. Did you want to uh, speak to that at all? Basically, uh, they asked uh, they can help us anyway with our materials for the roads, uh, loose that own gathering there. I told them uh, we do have a lot of ice issues here in the wintertime, and uh, right now we use a sand, and uh, there's a red cinder out there. It's a little costly for the town that purchase them all the time, and they said they would like to help us out on offset some of the cost there for purchasing that. So they had the, the town we checked five thousand dollars to help offset. So we're going to start mixing that in with our regular sand. We'll see more red cinders and road issue. Anybody want to make a comment on that at all? <coughs> I, I would like to ask the third budget, pass the budget, and somebody would like to make that motion, please. Someone will kill me. I second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, period. Highway. All right. Uh, the salt barn is under construction up to around 41. Bert Lee's started the <coughs> uh, Ron Lake has been out to the site a couple times for inspections as engineer for the town. The truss is up as we speak right now. Hoping uh, if the weather goes well, they should have a steel room on it by the end of the week. So we'll move on. <coughs> Last month at the meeting, I told you guys I'd have a couple quotes on some of those empty doors for the shop there. You know, uh, when we did the highway tour, I showed you how bad the shape they were in. And with the time frame we have, with our budget here, we want to make sure it gets paid for this year's budget. So what we did is we took the bids in. I want to let you guys know exactly where people were until we make the second bid, which we got the second bid. I called all you guys on the phone as we uh, discussed in the last meeting and uh, told you what the price would be with that. Explained to you that Gary Davey did come in at the lowest bid. Who was that? Gary Davey. Uh, four entrance doors to the uh, garage over there. Are going to be replaced. The second bidder was uh, Donald Palmer, the third, the second highest bidder. And uh, like I said, they've been ordered and they will be in installed into the shop on December 26th. Uh, they should be supposed to do into his uh, facility on the 21st. If you for Christmas, they'll start the day after. I uh, had a road tour with Dewey here the other day uh, with some concerns of road conditions from heavy truck traffic we've been having in the area. Uh, basically what we have done is we called Blue Stone and gathering up and we set a meeting up with them for tomorrow at 3 o'clock we're going to discuss uh, what we need to do to fix some of these roads at this time. Unfortunately the weather's a big factor right now. We all this warmer weather with the rain and you know at this time of year we have snow and ice and everything else and it usually freezes up. So we're going to talk to them and see what we got to do. We're looking, you know, basically these roads should have passed over the traveling public here. Over to the garage right now, in the break room there, there's a tool wooden desk there, along with an old workbench that come from the school shop. They're just sitting there at the idle. We really don't need them. The one door, if you pull it out, it actually just about falls apart. I'm looking for permission to get rid of them. Throw them in the garbage or you guys want to do with them, they're just taking up space over there. I just don't want to. Um, unless you guys have some suggestions that you want to do with them, they're very, like I said, the ones from the shop, from the school, they give them to them years ago, which is basically a catch all right now. They're just putting stock and stuff on it, oils and things like that. It's not any good. It's in the little shop out there. And there's two old wooden desks out there. I'd like to get rid of them also. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure it was off. You guys. Back a couple months ago, we uh, talked about a time clock cable into the shop. 
we've tried this thing now for a couple months. I've spoken to uh, Summer a little bit about it today. I've talked to Kevin a little bit about it. Basically, I feel uh, when this guy presented this thing to us, it sounded like it was a good thing. You know, we can do all this fancy stuff with it, so on and so forth. Well, we've given it a try here for a couple months, and uh, it's not working. Uh, last month, the computers crashed on me. I called the guy, the computer guy, come in, reset the computers. And uh, again, it just didn't work out. Again, today, the computers crashed. Guys couldn't punch in or out themselves. So I feel personally, uh, the time clock deal, if we want to do something to keep track of the employee's time, I would consider just going with this uh, plain old time clock that I have information here for you guys. I'm talking this summer today. We do have one and one budget here for it, uh, so we can pay for it without a problem. Uh, this year's budget, she told me. And uh, I think it would be more beneficial. It would be a lot easier for the guys to you know, click in in the morning, click out at night. They take vacation or whatever. On the side of the time clock the card here, there's a spot they can put in the time where it's personal, sick, vacation, so on and so forth. Um, like I said, with this uh, time clock system, we thought it would be a better system. They told us the guys can put their vacation time into it, sick time, and come to find out. I had a meeting with them with, uh, Monday this week here, and they told me vice versa. The only way to put that in is myself for summer. And meanwhile, if we're going to do that, I might better stay with the old system. You know, so it's taking more time to mine. That's just the whole thing that you guys consider, you know, go this way, it would save you time in the long run. And I feel it's uh, actually taking longer than it should be. And uh, Summer said it's the same thing, you know, why, why don't we stick with the older style with just the time clock and be done with it? Uh, she talked to me a little bit today about it. <clears throat> and uh, she felt that that system would not save her any time at all. Mm -hmm. and it would uh, create a, it would be more difficult for it. Um, and she indicated that she talked with you about it. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> what kind of cost are you talking about there? Well, we're talking at a cost of a grand total between the time clock, time cards for a full year, the time uh, card holder. For the shop over there, you're looking at a grand total of five hundred twelve dollars ninety six cents. I can pass that over so you guys can take a look at it, pass it around. And then uh, every year after that, you'd be buying time cards about twenty dollars for the year. It's been a When you say the computers crashed, you mean their site was down? The site wasn't down. The computer itself, like lost memory or something. So we had called blue storm out. We moved things, put the system back in the service. Well, I think that time clock plus definitely misrepresented themselves originally to us. When he originally talked to us, he fed us a good line, you know, oh, this is great, this guy, all your employees can put their time in your advance, they can time off, they can do this, they can do that, so on and so forth. And I think he sold himself on the road on it. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about it, we were on a basis with them as pay as you go, so we can take any kind of contract, you know, it would take a year or anything like that. So if we just just continue services and we call and say we're done, we don't pay them more. site work has been completed. We put the blacktop down so it's level ground for them. I called today. Uh, they're due to be installed on the 27th or 28th of this month. That carport will be put in. So you guys have the information on that. Then uh, I'm going to need some time in the executive uh, meeting here, discussion uh, for litigation strategies tonight. So what do you guys want to do with that one? Or we can do it at the end. That's fine with me. Uh, <coughs> I'd recommend we do it at the end. That's fine. We also have another item that we, yeah. And that's all I have? 
and she's indicated the organizational meeting at, uh, on the second. Um, <clears throat> anybody has any preference to what date they would like? I'm okay with the second. Yeah, the second works for me. Second, okay. January 2nd. And what was the justice again? Now that's not for sure. Uh, the organizational meeting, is that all okay for the second thing? Mm -hmm. yeah. At 7 o'clock? <clears throat> okay. Uh, now, as far as the judge, what, what day worked best for? And I can't remember what time we met with them. Did we? Did we meet uh, in the evening? Or the I don't know. Yeah. You're going to have an operation. On the 22nd. Okay. 23rd works for me, but I'm sure we got to check with them. To 22nd or 23rd, 24th South Okay, 22nd, 23rd. And that's at night, too? I believe we did it at night, at 7. And it was, uh, it was at 7 o'clock, January 26th. Okay. Um, okay. Would you? Like the 22nd or 23rd work for you? Can I get into this? Right. Well, how about we shoot for the 23rd now? Okay, 7 o'clock. Um, I did receive, well, we're, we're receiving uh, more information from the in reference to making sure that this really don't, I know Tom never liked the word audit because we really don't do a full audit, but, uh, but um, <clears throat> the state really is getting to where they really want it. Uh, Well, they're active on reporting on that audit, so we need to really make sure we do the best job we can. Okay. Okay. And um, town court received a notice from the Jones County Legislature of a 30-day period for inclusion of agricultural parcels in a certified district which runs from December 1st to the 31st, 2012. Town clerk has posted notice on the signboard. Um, I guess most of you know what that really is, I believe. If, if you're, um, if there's property or farmers or agriculture of any kind that wants to be considered, to be added on to the agriculture district, that's the time that uh, um, they should respond to this. What were the dates, Sylvia? I didn't Pardon me? What were the dates that you just mentioned? It was um, December 1st to the 31st, 2012. Could I ask what benefit that gives a, for a person to sign on to the well, agricultural district? They have certain. Um, uh, I believe it's if you have. Do you want me to read this whole thing, do we? Do we? Well, you you well, can. Yeah, why don't you read that? It's, uh, okay. The heading is County Legislative Body Notice of a 30 day period for inclusion of agricultural parcels in a certified agricultural district. The Broome County Legislature, by res Resolution 496 of 2004, established an annual 30-day period during which landowners can submit proposals to include viable land within a certified agricultural district. The 30-day period runs, as we said, the 1st through the 31st, 2012. Agricultural districts are designed to encourage the continued use of farmland for agricultural production. 
agricultural district should not be confused with town designated agricultural zones which determine allowable activities. The Agricultural and Markets Law was amended by the 2003 New York State Legislature to provide farmers with viable parcels within a certified agricultural district to add those parcels to an existing agricultural district annually instead of waiting until the agricultural district is eligible for its eight-year review. At the end of the 30-day period, all requests for inclusion are referred to the County Agricultural and Farm Land Protection Board. The board determines if each parcel submitted for inclusion consists predominantly of viable agricultural land and if inclusion of the land would serve the public interest by helping to maintain a viable agricultural industry within the district. The recommendations of the Agricultural and Farmland Protection Board to include parcels in an agricultural district are made to the county legislature, which following a public hearing will vote to adopt or reject the inclusion of the parcels into an existing agricultural district. Questions regarding these agricultural districts can be made by contacting Laura Lasilio at Cornell Cooperative Extension. I guess the, the answer to your question is that uh, to get the correct answers, you should call that. Uh, I can give you an idea of what it is. Mr. Schneider over here was was part of the second one that was ever developed in uh, in Broome County. That uh, what it, the intent is is uh, is to give a tax break to agriculture. I believe if it's it's either if it's either seven acres or more, and it has to be I think ten thousand income or more. Or if it's less than seven acres, it's got to be thirty thousand. And I think what that is saying is that um, uh, let's say a business that flowers or something that creates a fairly large income, but it's on small acres, and there is a capability of getting a a uh, break on your on your taxes. But to get the exact correct information, you, you should have that Okay. Okay. And <clears throat> the town clerk received a letter of retirement from Code Enforcement Officer Walter Ottens to be effective December 31st, 2012. And we should act on that, uh, accept that resignation with regret. But, um, Anybody? I make a motion we accept your regret, Walt's resignation. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, town board will need to review the local law amending the land use management local law siting of wireless telecommunications facilities. Local law was approved by the planning board to be approved by the town board to set up a public hearing at the January 8th, 2013 meeting. I believe this is one that we started two or three months ago and we know more about it started and they made some changes in it. And, uh, uh, that is to do with cell towers. So, uh, I got the information here. Somebody wants specific to do it. But, uh, really, what it's saying is that um, if there's going to be, for example, cell tower that they want to put, uh, what do you call them, more dishes on a tower or something, uh, the board really does not have the capability of denying it. That, um, there's certain things. Uh, 
collection of new transmission equipment, removal, removal of transmission equipment, or replacement of transmission equipment. Um, the local government may not deny. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but, uh, but they, um, they shall not require a public hearing. Uh, the application fees uh, are the same, but uh, it eliminates the public hearing and, and really the town does not have the authority to deny it. But you're still having a public hearing on January 8th? Is that what you're saying? We're having a public hearing to change the law. But uh, that's what this is saying, that uh, um, if there is a company that wants to make these changes that I said here, uh, there will not be a requirement to have a public hearing on that specific. Am I making it clear or is it, uh, you understand what I'm saying? Is that the only uh, things that they're requesting or is there more to that that you haven't read? Uh, like, are they requesting anything, let's say, additional towers or new roads construction? Oh, no, that, that would require public hearing. Yeah. Okay. okay. The only thing is, is these three items that I mentioned here. Mm -hmm. It's collection of, uh, of new transmission equipment, uh, removal, removal of transmission equipment, or replacement of transmission equipment. Those three things. Uh, the local government cannot deny it. If you're if they're going to put a tower up or something like that, there has to be public hearing. Why do you suppose they're asking for this? I mean, I think the reason why they're there? asking for this is because uh, a lot of these towers were built several years ago, and uh, I think now they're. The equipment is much more sophisticated. You uh, can tell me a lot more about this. And so they want to replace the old equipment uh, and update it. And they don't need to go through the uh, public hearings to replace that equipment. It's, it's more of a maintenance type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, they feel that that's would give better coverage and everything. It's not like building a tower. Basically, they're upgrading from copper to fiber. Yeah, but I mean, why, why would they even have to get permission to do that? If they, just have they have to change the equipment at the cell tower site. They're removing equipment, replacing equipment, which could mean changing some things on the tower as far as the equipment goes. That's basically, they're not going to change really the, the look of the tower or anything like that. It's basically, it's an upgrade. Yeah. There's many, many companies looking to take over these cell towers as far as their data and if it goes. Many fiber companies are running fiber hundreds of miles to pick up these cell towers. Mm. So. There was a town in our area that was in the paper this last week that turned it down. They turned down... Did you happen to read it? I was thinking it was Windsor. Johnson City. Was it? Yeah. Turned what down? A cell tower? Yeah, it was a cell tower. Well, they turned the whole tower down. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. see that. Must be they had a public hearing and <clears throat> like they did the location where it was. But. Is there any more questions on that? Is that the only land loose land use changes that you're going to be making? It's regarding the cell tower. That's that's only that's mm -hmm. to do with just just the cell tower. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and um, we would like the town board's approval to invest the taxes collected by the town clerk tax collector for the town and county taxes year 2013. Somebody make a motion? Yes. Yeah. Who's? I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. And the town clerk tax collector would like to set up a petty cash fund for the purpose of collecting year 2013 town and county taxes in the amount of $150 
and it is returned to the general fund by the first week in April of 2013. I'll make a motion. Second. Right. All approved. Okay. Opposed. Carried. And we need to authorize Supervisor Dewey Decker to prepare and report on the budget amendments for the year 2012. Any motion on that too? Thank you. 